Hello and welcome to this webinar about sextortion. Sextortion has become one of the highest reported fraud types in West Sussex, which is why we are um, carrying out this webinar today. And I will now hand over to Liz from Get Safe Online to start the session. Oh, thanks very much, Frankie. Well, it can be difficult to understand how and why sextortion happens. So rates of this has been rising, as you rightly pointed out there. Um, and it's 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 a lot to do with the pandemic too as well. It's now the issue most reported to the UK's revenge porn help porn helpline, um, with the support service recently revealing that it received twice the number of calls about sextortion in 2021 compared to 2020. So over the next 45 minutes, we are going to look at the hows, the whys, and the what to do if this you know happens to you or even if you are supporting somebody. But a little bit about us first. Um, I'm hoping that you've all heard of Get Safe Online. Um, we are working with West Sussex County Council um, and Frankie and Claudie and the team um, to try and get out information around keeping stay safe or staying safer when going online. We are a non-for-profit organisation and we do work in partnership with government and leading organisations such as the banking, uh, retail and internet security. The site is split into two, it's got two sections, it's got the personal and the business section there as well. Um, on a personal note, I'm an ex-police officer. I served for 25 years and I retired in 2017 um, and I've been working with Get Safe Online um, ever since then. Now, this video was created six years ago by Hampshire Police as part of their campaign in raising awareness. Six years on and it's still very relevant, more so now than ever. As I say, here in um, the West Sussex area, it is on the rise. Figures show that more and more people are falling for this horrendous crime. It's a crime that is affecting everybody, not just young people. So in the last three months of 2022, 48 reports were made to the police. That's reports that we know of. Many more go unrecorded or even spoke about. Many forms of intimate image abuse affect women. However, recent data from the Revenge Porn Helpline shows that the issue of sextortion, for the most part, affects men as well. Perpetrators um, of this type create catfish type profiles and are seen to particularly target people through dating websites and social media platforms. So let's just break it down and look at this in more detail. What does extortion really mean and how can you take control to prevent it happening? And why oversharing can result in blackmail and how do you protect yourself moving forward? So sextortion or webcam blackmail, as it unfortunately known, is a common crime that is on the rise. It often runs by organised crime gangs operating from a call centred like environment and they're exploiting several people at once for financial gain. It's not personal at all. It's low risk and it's an easy way for them to make money because they can reach many victims easily online. They'll encourage you to have some sexual fun by sharing pictures or just by partaking in an intimate video call and then start to blackmail you with these videos or um, pictures. They'll threaten you to upload the videos um, to put them onto the internet and then they'll throw the added bonus there that they're going to send it to your family and friends if you don't pay up. Now, sextortion emails started happening in 2018 when these types of blackmail emails started appearing. The majority of these type of emails are spam emails. Just ignore them, even if you get one that looks like it's been sent from your own account. Don't respond and certainly don't pay any money to the attacker. I do actually need to mention that some, you know, may follow through on the threats, but the vast majority don't. And the main reason for that is because once they've done that, they will lose their leverage if they post your information. After all, all they want is money. 
Now, you may be interested to read more about the helpline cases and trends on the Revenge Porn website. I put the link on there and it really is worth having a look at it. 85% of people living in the UK are on social media, sharing pictures, chatting to friends and sparking new romance online. They're all normal parts of modern life that we've all grown used to, especially through the pandemic. The online world can be a great place to expand your social circle and you can meet new friends and even that partner. You could even have a cheeky no strings encounter, but sextortion can start on any site, app, messaging platform or even gaming platforms where you meet people and you communicate. In some cases, the first contact from the criminal will be a threat straight in there. They may claim to already have a revealing picture or video and that they want to share it, especially young people where young people are concerned as well. They'll strike up a conversation or sometimes they'll try and hook you in with something else, even replying on a comment that you've made on somebody else's post. They may respond directly to you through a private message. Of course, they use fake identity and often they will front their identity by using an attractive woman to entice so that you engage with them and you will participate in cyber sex. These women may have been coerced themselves into these actions using financial incentives or they could even be threaten themselves to take part. Both men and women can be victims, either by being blackmailed or by being coerced into carrying out sexual acts. Now, as I say, sextortion scam has a common narrative that goes something like this. Somebody receives a seemingly harmless text or message over social media from an unknown sender. Then the sender will attempt to lure that victim into feeling a, sol a false sense of security without um, feeling, any feeling threatened or anything. It's just a harmless conversation. And in some cases, the sender will share something intimate about their own lives, which obviously is made up. But then in other cases, they'll act like they're interested in you. And sometimes they'll even send sexy pictures or photographs of themselves. Once the groundwork is in place or once they've hooked you in, they'll strike. They'll request you or the victim to open up to them. Part in take, take part in, in sharing videos or sharing photographs, intimate photographs as well. And once the victim has done this, once they've sent them on to them, the attacker, the perpetrator has the advantage and that's when the blackmail will start. And once they've got all them, they will start to threaten you, um, that they'll put it onto the internet or they will send it out to all your family and friends as well. And the big question is who can be uh, a victim? Well, the answer is pretty simple really, anybody. However, in a recent American study showed that men were more likely than women to, to have um, problems in this sense. They experienced sex torture since the start of the pandemic. There's lots of reasons why, um, and it may come as a surprise as well, considering women tend to be sexually victimised more frequently than men. As I say, there are a number of reasons, one of them being that men actually spend more time online than women especially during the pandemic, and also that men are less selective when dating and more likely to fall for romance type scams, which obviously can lead to these sort of demands. And that study actually found that the LGBTQ community um, were three times more likely to fall uh, to be a target by sex exploitation. Now, this little video, again, it's been around for a while, but very, very um, up to date with it. It was from, uh, it was created by the National Crime Agency. That's it. Okay, fine. Cool. Ready? Yeah. Okay, and go. I'm more excited for this than I was The Dark Knight Rises. Jesus. All right, let's go. Okay, so I have received a friend request from Jess, 20 years old. Everyone has received a friend request from a stranger. Come on, man. No, but I don't want to say. I can probably show you two friend requests on my phone right now that are just from yeah. random people. Okay, so we're on Skype now. Great. I'm Jess. Sometimes you just want to have some fun. Right, okay. Do yep. you know what I mean? 
I know. I think I know what you mean. You don't mean Monopoly, do you? <laughs> She's gonna be like, Cam girl is like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Professional, like, like. You need to slow down just for a minute. I could take my top off. I've only just met you, Jess. I'm intrigued to know what's going on because it's so random. I'm gonna be intrigued, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. You intrigued I'm just gonna by wait. her? You could take your top off. Loads of people do it, don't they? I don't yeah, think I it's think so. like, it's, like it's not unusual. Thing. Yeah, yeah. You're like one of those little videos that pop up at the bottom, like, hi, I want to chat. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just weird. Yeah, there's like 20 single mums in your area. I'd probably just lay quiet and like, put, <laughs> no, no, I mean, this I don't know what to do now. I'm nervous though. I feel there's more to this. I'd like to watch you doing stuff while I do stuff. Yeah. So they're like, yep. We're looking left or right. Uh... They're like, wait, let me lock the door. Let me... Okay, you know what I think? I think this this would be like a setup or something. I wouldn't take him on top off. I wouldn't listen to anything she's saying. At 26, it makes me feel really uncomfortable. At 20, it probably wouldn't have done. How many you know people talk about sending Snapchat? The word <laughs> pick probably came off from our generation. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't. Because you know what? I feel awkward, Jess. You're being recorded. Am I? Understand. You're being blackmailed. Your contacts have been downloaded. The film will be shared with your friends, your family. Oh, mate. Oh, my God, does this happen? Oh, God. Nah, that's, that's, that's bad. That's bad. 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 Your contacts have been downloaded. Oh, oh, oh. Understand. Okay. Unless you pay. And now you're peeling off. And now you're peeling off so <laughs> many reddies. <laughs> So that's like a completely false room. She's just, mm. she's just there to image. I'm literally gripping my knees so tightly now because this is, this is tense. Yeah. Your fans, your mum, your dad, all the production companies you've ever worked for, Netflix, everyone. Ooh. It's gonna defy my can't. I I wouldn't be able to breathe. And if you think you can talk me out of it, think again. Because for the guys behind me pressing the buttons, it's just business. That really puts it out there um, and demonstrates how easy it is just with a click on a friend request. Obviously, not everybody you meet online is going to be a criminal. In fact, around 30% of relationships actually start online. But there are some good tips on here just to help you potentially avoid dangerous situations like this. So let's have a look. Check their social media profiles as well. Does it look realistic? How many friends do they have? Are there, um, you know, up to date posts or are they just generic posts out there as well? And how quickly are things moving between the two of you? Are they putting pressure on you? Are they trying to move you off the platforms that you met onto a different chat platform, which is um, a um, end to end encrypted where there's just going to be the two of you? If you are looking to start a relationship online, um, there are some things that you need to do just to help you from becoming a target. I've already mentioned that criminals will try to befriend you just by using a fake, uh, fake persona. Um, so let's have a look. Personal information is readily available online. It is just a matter of doing a little bit of digging around. So let's start with um, reverse image searches. First of all, check them out, check the name. What does it, what comes back on a, a Google search? And then let's put the picture in there. If you're not quite sure how to do that, let's just have a have a look. Um, if you go onto Google Images and just click on the camera, if you screenshot the picture that they've sent you potentially, um, and then just drag it across, what that does then will give you visually similar um, pictures to the one that you've uploaded. If you can, try and make sure it's just the face and that you cut out any of the backgrounds there as well. It's also going to show you examples um, of where that picture has been used um, and more likely 100%. So you will find that these fake personas, they've been stolen from people's accounts off Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, and also from potentially catalogues. Um, they'll take the pictures from anywhere where they can. If you don't use Google, then try TinEye image search. It works exactly the same as the Google as well. So let's stop, let's take control, let's secure our accounts, change the password for your social media and online accounts and review the privacy settings uh, for all your accounts. And why are you still re re reusing passwords? 
the ease by which passwords can be cracked um, obviously is determined by the length uh, and the complexity of your password. So let's just try and keep things simple and let's make sure that we are using three random words um, for every password online. So let me have a look and show you how easy to do. Think of three random words, any, any words. Um, here we've got stop, think, protect. And for us to be able to identify which account it is, um, I've just shown it here. You can write the account, you can just do the initials, a random number and um, a character there as well. So you've got your three random words and then your formula is how you pull it all together. That way it makes it a lot more secure and a lot more complicated for um, the, the, the criminals, the scammers to guess your password. We also need to be thinking about 2FA, two-factor authentication, about layering. So all your accounts that you've got out there or your social media accounts and everything else, let's look at the settings, go into there and let's start um, taking back control and setting up that extra layer of a two-factor authentication. And what that does basically is you secure your accounts with a, a secure PIN number. Um, if somebody is to try and use your account or if you're using your account in an area or on a device that you've never used before, it will ask you, it'll send you a message and ask you, is this you? And for you then to verify that it is. And thinking about um, terms and conditions of all these apps and everything else that you you're downloading how many actually read um, the terms and conditions most people just you know they just brush past it just to get it on there and how do you know you've uh, you've downloaded it from the um, from the right um, app store just be aware what permissions you're giving out and what you know what apps what you what you're granting the apps to be uh, to be able to have access to so it really is important to have a look at that and the other thing is just think about where you are downloading clicking on little app uh, little messages that are being sent supposedly from friends not always from friends or you may um, you may be on a social media app and there may be links on there in the chat um, these could be um, twofold one you may end up with having malware put in onto your devices which then obviously um, can steal what you're doing um, you know look at your um, photographs and capture all things like that and then the other the other side of it is um, obviously that once they've got um, access to your devices potentially they can also um, screenshot and take everything else or take the videos and and, and everything off there so Think where you're downloading them from. Don't just click, click on any random links. Um, look at Apple Store, Google Play, Microsoft. Um, make sure that it is the correct website that you're downloading from. And secure your accounts. Securely um, make sure that they are all updated. Um, all your apps, all your accounts uh, are all individually updated as well. Updates patch the holes, backups protect what matters. It prevents malicious software accessing your systems as well. You don't want your camera activating without you knowing it. Definitely you don't, and you don't want your keystrokes being watched either. So apart from protecting your mal from malware, it will also keep your device running and be more efficient as well. So what about your information out there? Obviously, the criminals or the people who are doing this, they will want to know uh, if they are targeting you, uh, what information is out there so that they can be more believable when they do start to try and reel you in. Um, so think about it. Google your own name. Um, Google yourself. Put an image search on for yourself as well. It is um, worth having a look at your home addresses. Is What is that out there as well? 192.com. Um, you can get um, a full report what's out there. There is a small cost to that if you wanted to take it that step further as well. And what about your family and friends? What are they saying about you? What have they? What information are they giving away about you? You need to think. Think who can see your future posts. Who can see your friends lists? Limit the audience for your old posts as well. Do you want search engines outside the platform to link to your profile? Make sure you're reviewing your posts that your friends tag you in before you will actually appear, allow them to appear on your timeline. And what about access to your contacts, your locations, your camera, even your microphone? Have you given permission for that as well? There are some homeworks that you need to do. You need to go away and start looking at all your apps uh, and everything that you've downloaded on there and start going through them individually as well.
Go into your settings on each app and look at what you've allowed them. It, it is quite simple. And if you're reusing passwords, change them as well. And as I say, over, over sharing, have a look at reverse image search of yourself. Go into these apps and request the information that they hold. What have, um, what have you liked? What have you shared? What photographs are already out there? Um, they'll send you a zip file and you're able to work your way through them and start getting things removed as well. Set up a Google alert in relation to yourself. This really is helpful. Some victims of sexploitation find it reassuring just to create a Google alert. You can set these up with tags in your name or anything else that is posted online with your name. Um, they'll send you a notification via email on there. And it's also just, as I say, worth looking at all your accounts and make sure that they are locked down. Now, they will apply as much pressure as possible sending constant messages, calling you, screenshotting your friends list to show you that actually they mean business. It feels never ending. Threats and demands for more money will continue again and again. So if the fun stops and the blackmail threats start, it is time to start to do something about it. Firstly, it is important to remember that you're not alone and that you've done nothing wrong. Try not to panic, I know it's easy to say, but reach out instead if you can. Get support from a trusted friend or family member, as well as an expert counsellor supporting service if you are feeling anxious or stressed. Certainly don't pay any money, they'll only ask for more. And if you can, take screenshot evidence of any threats that has been made and save the direct URL links to the profile. And report the profile to the sites that you're using and deactivate your accounts. Don't delete them because you may actually lose some evidence there and the police will use this as part of their investigation. Most importantly, don't communicate any further with them at all. Just block them and stop all communication and ask your friends to do the same. Now, many don't report because of the shame and embarrassment and that's what the criminals are relying on. They certainly don't expect you to report it. But all platforms offer support and guidance on what you can um, and, and, and how you can do this to help yourself in a situation. Here are just some of the examples. And for most of the changes of privacy settings, etc., like that, um, have a look at the Revenge Porn, uh, porn Helpline if you're not quite sure where or, or how you actually um, change your settings and report these things. They've got hyperlinks on their page, which will take you directly to there. Now, you may or may not heard of Take It Down. This is for people who have images or videos of themselves nude or partly nude um, or even in sexual explicit situations. They will help get them taken down. So these, this service here is for um, people under the age of 18 that they believe have or, um, or will be shared online. So, for example, maybe they've sent a picture to someone, but now they're threatening you know, that person with um, with the thought that it's going to be posted somewhere. So it's worth just getting in touch with them and having a conversation. Now, if you are over 18 uh, and these things have happened to you, um, stop nc11.org. That's a free tool designed to support victims of non-consensual imaging abuse. This tool actually works by generating a hash from the images and the videos uh, that's been created as well. So it'll just save you from having to trawl through and 24-7 and being online um, waiting for the next picture to be posted or just in case it's going to be posted. They share the information with um, other organisations so that they can help detect and remove the images um, from being shared. And if you have been a victim of intimate abuse, um, revenge porn or sex exploitation, um, have a really, um, the, the revenge porn has a really informative website as well. And they've also got um, practitioners or helpline practitioners who can give you help and support and guide you um, into what to do next. The other good um, organisation is victim support. Again, you don't have to go to the police. You don't have to have a crime number or anything like that. They will support you for as long as you need them. Um, you can self-refer. Again, just go uh, onto their website. Sex station, it is a criminal offence. 
this behaviour, which has become known as sextortation, also constitutes the criminal offence of blackmail. Um, this actually is punishable with a maximum offence um, sentence of two years imprisonment. Um, with that said, each case is treated individually as there may be other offences in there as well. So please do consider calling the police. They are there to support and investigate as well. And if you are struggling, um, especially if you're a young person, then please talk to a trusted adult and, and, and so we can access the additional support for you. Just remember you're not alone and you've done nothing wrong. You do need to reach out as and when you can. There is support there um, and there will be people who can help you.